Welcome to another Tableau tutorial video. I'm Weston Palmer. If you find these videos helpful, consider supporting me through Patreon. Hey, today's topic is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be using a lot more uh, PowerPoint slides, and that's because today's topic is based on some survey results from the community. Here's my web page. If you go to my YouTube page, go to community. And this was a question that I put out probably a week ago. Uh, what interests you? And most people wanted to see more about dashboard design and dashboard theory. So that's what I'm going to talk about is four design principles that you can apply to your dashboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a previous dashboard that I designed when I first started out building dashboards using Kickstarter, some funding data. And we're going to see how we can improve this dashboard based on some of these principles that we're going to discuss. So those four principles are, first, you got to understand what the purpose of the dashboard is. And then prepare to iterate. You're going to make changes. And then discussing that less is more. And then finally, removing distractions. So the first principle is what is the purpose of the dashboard? Someone comes to you and says, hey, build me a dashboard. What do you want it to be about? What are you trying to solve? Uh, and that is really key because that is going to help determine if the visuals that you put on here, the charts, the graphs, the, the data tables, if they're relevant or if it's just interesting. And one of the first things that I try to do is I try to put that purpose, try and capture that purpose in the actual title. Uh, another thing to be aware of is if you're showing multiple sheets like I often do, you're going to want to make sure that the name of the worksheet or the dashboard tab is relevant so that you know exactly where you're going. So let me do that now. So we're now in the Tableau, uh, this is on Tableau Public, the worksheet. And you can see I've changed the name. Now, you may notice that I dropped the data source of kegel.com. And that's important. Uh, I would keep it back on. I might put it in the low, one of the lower corners so that it's not necessarily in the title. But here's the first one. is like, what does success look like for Kickstarter campaigns? And so now you can go through and you can look at the different charts to understand, is this relevant or not? You know, the first one that we had said, um, what is the funding? But if you look at these charts, number of backers, backers versus days, that doesn't tie to funding. Those are irrelevant charts. They're interesting, but maybe not appropriate for this work page. So in this case, uh, what does success look like? Backers versus days, it's not clear how this relates to success. And the number of backers by country, it's not clear either. So we're probably going to change those charts, which gets me to point number two, prepare to iterate. I don't know, maybe you've had this situation where somebody comes up to you and says, hey, this is what, uh, this is, I want a dashboard about, in this case, kick, uh, Kickstarter successful campaigns. Okay, what do you want to see on there? They don't know. Or they want a chart, but they don't know what it is. So iterating is going to be extremely important. Don't get married to a particular idea or concept because uh, it's probably going to change. In fact, what I often do before the, the pandemic, when we were in person, I would sketch things out on pieces of paper or on a whiteboard and say, hey, if the chart looks like this, does that answer your question or does that get you the information that you need? The client can come back and say, well, no, I need this. Or, well, it kind of does. It doesn't quite get me there. And so you can have that back and forth. I highly recommend that. Do sketches first. Ask the questions first, because that'll make it so much easier when you actually get into building a chart or a graph. In this case, I've, uh, I've reiterated, iterated and reiterated, I think that's how you say it, this chart a number of times. So now that the, this chart will look a little bit different. It looks a little bit more like this. I like the diamonds uh, as the target versus the line. 
I've had to go through and when I'm looking at this chart initially ask my question okay so if the bar is the dollars and the line is the pledge if, am I showing that we're not getting to our the goals that's the other thing is ask yourself the question does the chart actually answer the question or is what the chart saying or appear to be saying what's actually happening so that's important third principle this is where I'm going to do a lot of changes here less is more and what I mean by that is less ink is more impactful there is a lot of ink on this page here the lines the uh, the grid lines here I'm not sure if it's very relevant doesn't necessarily help uh, the message can get a can the message get across with less and this is just less ink it's less charts it's less colors that is one thing you have to be careful of one thing that I've seen quite a bit of, is that people put color on everything like in this chart here if you had the number of backers having each of those boxes a different color it doesn't add anything and at some point you get so many colors that you're it's distracting and it doesn't communicate the message if it's not contributing to the message then it's not going to be relevant let me show you what I've done for this dashboard same concepts but I removed a lot of things you'll notice that the lines are missing or grid lines are gone and the axis is gone and then you ask well how are you going to know what those values represent these line charts you're just trying to tell relevance or trends if you're if the user is really interested in looking at what a particular data point is having those grid lines are, is probably not going to help what data what what the what's the value of that point there well is that 21 is that 22 22 5 so you're still guessing right you're going to have you're going to hover over it the users are going to hover over it to get the information and if they're going to hover over it to get the information then you don't need these axes here same thing up here if they're wondering what these values are it's so close to 600,000 that they're going to want to hover over to understand what's the difference so here you go you can see the trend you can see that okay we're doing better to our target if you want to see what the target is or goal is you can hover over it and then you can make the tooltip a little more clear like I've done here this is where I was talking about less color you could put a different color on each of these categories but it would be distracting it would distract from the message which gets me to remove distractions it's a little bit different than less ink but remove distractions I don't know how many times I've seen people have the default uh, filter selection where it shows all of the all the options in the filter box shrink those down make those drop down menus having too much white space when I was first putting this together there was a big blank here and it just looked odd right it didn't look balanced and when I mean balanced it doesn't mean that all the charts have to look the same these four here look the same but I could change this from top 10 to top 25 and shrink this down and that would be fine you just want it to be balanced you don't want to have a bunch of color or a bunch of solid shapes on one side and nothing really heavy on the other so you want to balance it the other thing that's important maybe it's obvious is double check on the spellings you want to make this look professional double check on the spellings make sure the fonts are are similar are consistent make sure that the the sizing and the shading is all consistent because I think as as humans we're we're wired to pick up on things that don't fit a pattern and if these don't fit if one of these don't fit a pattern our eyes are immediately drawn to that you focus on things that are not the same so I hope that helped really appreciate everybody that responded to the survey those four concepts again are what's the purpose of the dashboard prepare to iterate I mean expect to make changes less is more and then remove the distractions thanks for watching I hope you'll subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when new videos are released. 
check out some of these other videos I think you'll find helpful.